अज्जमी जन योग प्रापदीश्वर्योग जगति च गतिमत प्रापदेक विविध विषय धर्म मुग्धेक्षना प्राणथ भय विहंत्रिभ्राम यथास्मी प्रवैशाखवेदक्षु भीतजल निर्वेदना नौतरस्ता भूतन्यालोक्यमतज घोरे सामुदे कारुण्यादारमृतमीदुर्लभ हम भूत हे थोर यस्त पूज्य विपूज परम गुरु मद पदर्नाथस्मीलोक भाष प्रतिहति मगमत्स्वा मोहंडकार मज्जोन्मज्ज घोरे यन्मकृदुप जनोधनव श्रीता श्रुतिशम विनय प्राप्तिरगमोघनीय भाव भय विनुद सर्वभाव्ये शांति 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 I bow to that Brahman the destroyer of all fear of those who take shelter under it which though unborn appears to be associated with birth through its inscrutable and indescribable power of knowledge and activity which though ever at rest appears to be moving and which though non-dual appears to have assumed multifarious forms to those whose vision is deluded by the perception of endless objects and their attributes I prostrate to the feet of that great teacher the most adored among the adorable who out of sheer compassion for the beings drowned in the deep ocean of the world infested with the terrible sharks of incessant births and deaths rescued for the benefit of all this nectar hardly obtainable even by the gods from the innermost depths of the ocean of the vedas by churning it with the churning rod of his illumined reason obeisances with my whole being to those holy feet of my great teacher the dispellers of the fear of this chain of births and deaths who through the light of his illumined reason destroyed the darkness of delusion enveloping my mind who destroyed forever my notions of appearance and disappearance in this terrible ocean of innumerable births and deaths and who makes all others who also take shelter at his feet attain to the unfailing knowledge of scriptures peace and the state of perfect non-differentiation namaste Ooh, that was quite some shlokas. Shankaracharya can really put that Sanskrit together. <laughs> I tried to recast it in some simpler chandas, uh, meters, Sanskrit meters, but it just kind of lost the special quality that Sanskrit has when they're in the long, long meters. 
why do we have Guru Pranam? Why do we have invocation, introduction, and all these other uh, preliminary sections? Part of the process of introducing a scripture is sambandha. Sambandha means the relationship. What relationship does this scripture have to the Guru Parampara, the Vedas, the Sanskrit rules for different kinds of literature, and so on? All this has to be established so that the peace can be held in the proper context, because context determines meaning. So, these introductory sections by Shankaracharya establish the meaning of the scripture by building its sambandha, its relationship with everything else, the whole context of the Vedic literature, and indeed, the context of life itself. I bow to that Brahman that, during the waking state, after having experienced all gross objects by pervading the entire universe through the omnipresent rays of its immutable consciousness, embraces the entire variety of the movable and the immovable objects. That again, after having digested, as it were, that is to say, experienced in the dream state, all the variety of objects produced by desires and brought into existence by the mind, enjoys bliss in deep sleep and makes us experience its bliss through maya, which further is designated in terms of maya as the fourth, Turiya, which is supreme, immortal, and changeless. May that Turiya, that through Maya, having identified itself as the entire universe, experiences in the waking state the manifold gross objects of enjoyment through ignorance and attachment. That again, during the dream state, being enlightened by its own light, experiences the subtle objects of enjoyment, the objects that are brought into existence by its own internal organ and which, lastly, in dreamless sleep, withdraws all objects, subtle as well as gross, within itself, and thus becomes free from all distinctions and differences. May this Turiya that is ever devoid of all attributes protect us. With the word Aum begins this treatise, consisting of four chapters, the quintessence of the substance of the import of Vedanta. Hence, no separate mention is made of the mutual relationship, the subject matter, and the object to be attained, matters usually stated in an introduction to a study of any Vedantic treatise. For that which constitutes the relationship, the subject matter, and the object of Vedantic study is self-evidently Brahman. Nevertheless, the opinion of scholars is that one desiring to explain a prakarana treatise should deal with them. The vishaya, subject matter of this treatise, is revealing the means for realization of Atman. That is the prayojana, or the object to be attained. It therefore possesses sambandha, specific relationship, Vishaya, subject matter, and prayojana, though indirectly through acquisition of knowledge of Brahman. What, then, is that end or purpose? It is thus explained. As a man stricken with disease regains his normal state with the removal of the cause of the disease, similarly the individual self laboring under the misapprehension of identification with misery, recovers its normal state with the cessation of the illusion of duality which manifests itself as the phenomenal universe. The realization of non-duality is the priogena, the end to be attained. 
This treatise is begun for the purpose of revealing Brahman, inasmuch as by vidya, knowledge, the illusion of duality caused by ignorance is destroyed. This is established by such scriptural passages as, Because when there is duality, as it were, then one sees something, one knows something, and so on. When there is something else, as it were, then one can see something, one can know something. But when to the knower of Brahman everything has become the self, then what should one see and through what? Then what should one know and through what? Now, here in the introduction, Shankaracharya is showing the relationship of Mandukya Upanishad with the other Upanishads by bringing in some quotations that are commonly accepted to state the purpose of all the Upanishads, which is to realize Brahman. And so the particular shlokas that he quotes from Brihadaranyaka Upanishad are about what it's like, what is the experience of actually realizing Brahman. So let's listen to these quotes in full because they've been trimmed down a little bit <laughs> to fit in the introduction, but they're very important and fundamental. So let's take a closer look. The Complete References Because when there is duality, as it were, then one smells something, one sees something, one hears something, one speaks something, one thinks something, one knows something. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 2.4.14 When there is something else, as it were, then one can see something, one can smell something, one can taste something, one can speak something, one can hear something, one can think something, one can touch something, or one can know something. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 4.3.31 but when to the knower of Brahman everything has become the self, then what should one smell and through what? What should one see and through what? What should one hear and through what? What should one speak and through what? What should one think and through what? What should one know and through what? Through what should one know that owing to which all this is known? Through what, O oh Maitreyi, should one know the knower? Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 2.4.14 In other words, Brahman is unrelated with anything. So when one realizes Brahman, one becomes completely disconnected from the world. That means there's nothing to see, nothing to hear, nothing even to know. In other words, not only perception, but even consciousness is not there in Brahman. Well, what is there then? <laughs> Sat Chit Ananda. Unlimited eternal, unconditioned existence, knowledge or consciousness, and bliss. Why is that? Because there is no other to cause pain. Try to understand. One loves oneself. Ramana Maharshi was famous for saying this more than anybody else. So there's another passage in the Upanishads, in the, uh, yeah, Brihadaranyaka, that says, one does not love the wife for the sake of the wife. One loves the wife or husband, spouse, for the sake of the self. Brahman. Brahman is within everything. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna mentions that Brahman is the subtle, all-pervading beauty of the creation. So there's beauty within everything. 
But that beauty isn't due to the thing itself. It's because of the presence of Brahman in everything. So when one realizes Brahman, then there's no more need for any of this external activity, including any kind of sense activity or even consciousness. This is important to know to understand the rest of Shankara's introduction. The first chapter of Mandukyopanishad seeks to indicate the traditional means to realization of the essential nature of Atman by dealing specifically with the Vedic texts and is devoted to determining the meaning of Aum. The second chapter seeks to demonstrate rationally the unreality of duality, the illusion of duality being destroyed, non-duality becomes self-evident, as cessation of the imagination of snake in the rope effortlessly reveals the real nature of the rope. The third chapter is devoted to the rational demonstration of the truth of non-duality, lest anyone should argue that it is unreal. The fourth chapter rationally refutes schools of thought that are antagonistic to the truth of the Vedas and are opposed to the knowledge of Advaitic reality by pointing out their falsity by their own mutual contradictions. How again does ascertaining the meaning of Aum become an aid to the realization of the reality of the Self? The answer is from such Vedic texts as that goal which all the Vedas with one voice propound which all the austerities speak of, and wishing for which people practice brahmacharya, it is this, Aum. This medium, Aum, is the best. O Satyakama, this Aum is verily superior and inferior Brahman. Meditate on the Self as Aum. Aum is Brahman. Aum, indeed, is all this. It follows that just as the non-dual self, notwithstanding the fact that it is the supreme reality, can still be the substratum of all such illusions as the vital force, like the rope, etc., becoming the substratum of the snake, Similarly, it is but Aum that appears as all the ramifications of speech that have for their contents such illusory manifestations of the self as the vital force, etc. And Aum is essentially the same as the self, since it denotes the latter. And all the illusory manifestations of the self, such as the vital force, etc., that are apparent modifications of Aum, do not exist apart from their names. In accordance with the Vedic texts, all apparent modification of Brahman exists only in name, having speech as its support. All this phenomenal creation of that Brahman is strung together by the thread of speech and by the strands of names. All these are but dependent on names and so on. Hence, Mandukyopanishad begins, Aum itieta taksharam midam sarvam. The letter Aum is all this.